Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with the bestie Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie Jessica. So it's that time again. It's time for us to do our one minute book recs. This is where we go over all the books that we read in the past week with one minute synopsises for each book. <laughs> But before we get started with that, what do you want to tell them, Andy? Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're entered to win these books. When we get to 1,500 subscribers, we will be giving those away. So hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram for an extra entry. Cool. Do it. Yeah. Um, okay. So I, I kind of, I didn't see you much this week or talk to you. No. Look on. So this is our one minute book Rex for, let's see, April 27th through May 3rd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was gone. Jessica was gone. So we're, we're a week behind. We are a week behind, but we're going to get caught up. Actually, we're only a couple days late because this normally would have come out on Monday. So yeah, yeah we're good. Okay. So, so um, tell me about your, your reading week. Um, I had one five-star review. That sounded weird. Uh, And I read a total of nine books, but two went together. So I have eight to talk about. Okay. I don't think I had any five stars. I'm just kind of looking. I mean, I had a five star that was a reread. It was an audio that we'll talk about. Most of mine were four stars. Um, This is going to sound crazy. So don't panic. (laughs) I read 16 books, but we're going to talk about eight of them. I went on, I just, I did, well, because I listened to a bunch of Ice Planet Barbarians. I was like, nothing, nothing sat right this week. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't get into anything. Oh, I had that problem too. And I asked for some recommendations and somebody destroyed my life. I can't wait to hear about that. (laughs) That's not this week though. You'll have to wait till next Monday because I finished, I read the book this week. But it was based on last week. I just wasn't yeah. getting anywhere. I read like those books and I just I wasn't getting where I wanted to. But now I'm back in the groove of reading. Yeah. Same with me. I'm back in the groove. I, I found a couple of good ones, but they're all going to be talked about in the next video. But I wanted to show you really quick. I forgot to do this before we hit the record. Not to say that we don't have some good books in this video, though. We do. Yes, we do. Yeah. Um. Look what came. Look what Pam said. Isn't Ooh, it pretty? It's nice. so. Oh, that's going to fall out. She's got even like different art this time inside. I mean, just, it's got the same kind of art, but like different art. Like how cool. Sweet. So I had to show you. Okay. okay. Um, so let's, let's get rolling. Get started. So I've got eight and you've got eight. Talk about Yes. All right. Sounds good. Okay. You got our timer ready? I do. Do you want me to go first? Or you want to go first? Always. Me always. Okay. <laughs> All right. So like I said, I did some rereads. We're just going to talk about this first book in this series because maybe there's one person out there who hasn't read Ice Planet Barbarians. And if you haven't, we'll just talk about it. If you have, you can you can jump. It's only a minute, guys. Um, but anyhow, this is Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. It is an alien romance. It is like the best alien romance out there. Uh, Georgie gets abducted in the middle of the night by bad aliens. And they, the ship has a bunch of girls in it. And they end up crash landing on an ice planet. And that is where she meets Vectal because she has to go save everybody. Uh, or at least go try and find help. And uh, he he's her fated mate. I mean, it's a fated mate situation. They all get these little cootie things and, and they 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 have to stay there. To, it's a symbiont so that they can stay on the planet. So they can't go home. Love it. There's, I mean, I had, I realized I hadn't done an Ice Planet Barbarian reread in a long time. I'm looking at, you know, um, I mean, for of the original. It had been two years since I'd actually read the original. I was really surprised. Anyhow, I just want to throw it out there just in case somebody hasn't read it. Still awesome. Okay. All right. So what's your first book? All right. My first book is A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare. So this is about Minerva and Colin. This is a historical romance and Minerva needs to get to Scotland to do a presentation at a geological meeting thing. (laughs) And she convinces Colin, who they don't really get along very well. Colin's a little bit of a playboy back in the day. I think they call him a rake. And she convinces him to come with her. Colin 
like, and then just a lot of shenanigans ensue on this trip. It's funny at times. It's also got some serious side. Colin suffers from like some serious um, nightmares and insomnia. So we definitely have like the wed one bed trope happening in this. It It's just, it was a really, really good read. I enjoyed it a lot. I rated it four stars. Okay. Did you time yeah. it? It didn't. Oh. I was fast. You were so impressed. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So my next book, I just want everybody to know that Teddy Hamilton narrates this book, which is why I went and grabbed it. So anyhow, so this is a new release by Rebecca um, Jen Shack. I always want to add an in there and call her Jen Shank. I'm so sorry, but it's Jen Shack. Uh, and this is Burnout. This is about Avery and Knox. Avery, these guys are in their early 20s. Avery is an Olympian, Olympic champion. She's been injured, um, but she's still working towards building herself back up so that she can do the Olympic tryouts again or get back to where she was. And then you have Knox. He is a motocross racer. And something happens where he gets kicked off his team um, because of an accident, a situation. And so then he has a friend who does the, not the motocross, but like the, the one where they do all the tricks and stuff, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, and so they want him on his team for, on their team for a while. So he needs to build up his upper body strength to do that. And that is how he meets Avery. She trains him to try to get him to build his upper body strength. Um, and this obviously is a hate to love. They're, they're they kind of, they bicker back and forth. They're very young, but, um, I still enjoyed it. It was a great little comfort read. I gave it four stars. There was nothing profound that happened in it. Um, it was just, it was a fun little read. It's a great little palate cleanser. Okay. It's heavy narrated. So done. Okay. All right. What you also got? Okay. So I read Strong and Steady by Vanessa Hale. She also writes under Vanessa Dare. So just okay. an FYI on Goodreads that comes up a little different. So this is about Emery and Grayson. Emery is in her late 30s. So she's an older heroine. Oh. Right? Just about <laughs> older in her late 30s. No, anyway, so young. most of the book girls in these books are like in their early 20s. So anyway, an older heroine. Yes, she has a son who just left for college. And so she has decided that she is ready to date. She has not been dating since uh, her son's dad, basically. And they got divorced several years ago. And now that her son's in college, she decides she's ready to date. She meets Grayson. Grayson is a cowboy, but he's also a retired MMA fighter. So we have some different aspects going on there. And there, this has definitely got a suspense element to it because somebody is messing with stuff like her porch lights get shot out and different or broken and different things like that. And so he thinks... That's my time. Mm -hmm. He thinks that he might be the cause of it because of some people after him. So there's like his desire to like protect her. So four star read. Okay. Okay. Um, I found a historical that is a Western that is mail order bread. Yay. Um, yay. So we're going to talk about that one. Although it was, it was, it was okay. It was good. I enjoyed it. It was, it was good. It just wasn't amazing, but we'll talk about that. So this is, the Stolen Bride. This is by Cynthia Wolf. Um, this is the third book in her Hope's Crossing series, but it's a standalone, so you can read it as a standalone. I actually listened to the audio. Uh, this is about Bella. She lives in New York. She is um, of marrying age, and her extremely cruel father has decided that she's going to marry this guy who's like a billion times her age. It's like some old, nasty man. And this guy's also cruel and, and she doesn't like him. And so instead of, the, I think dad had some debts or something. So he's going to force her into this marriage. So the night that she finds out about this, her mom comes to her and says, pack, you know, this is what you need to pack. I'm sending you out West. I'm smuggling you out tonight to get you away from this situation. And you're going to go to this town and you're going to apply as a mail order bride. And when you get there and you get to, the husband that you get assigned to, you need to sleep with him right away. You need to lose your virginity and you need to get pregnant as soon as possible. And so that is what she does. She goes out West. She gets, you know, meets up with the, the person who's in charge of the mail order bride service. Then she meets Alex. Alex is a widower with two little girls, but Alex is very hung up on his wife as his wife who's passed away. And 
he doesn't want to sleep with his new wife. He just wants her to help with the kids. So this, and she's still got someone coming after her. Like this guy is coming after her. I gave it, I gave it three and a half stars. I, I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. It just, there was a few spots that kind of drug for me. Some of the dialogue was a little, I don't know, young. Like it just wasn't, it wasn't as fluid as it could have been. Um, but I think that it was still very enjoyable. So. It sounded like it was more like mail order nanny. Mail order. Well, I mean, it's, she's begging him to sleep with her. So, you know, and I felt like they could have done that stuff a little bit better, but it's just me. So, okay. What else do you got? Okay. I read Beautiful Savage by L.V. Lane, which I read for Convincing My Bestie, which came out on Saturday. Okay. Like I said, we're recording. We, our yeah. schedule's off just a little bit to accommodate yeah. somebody being gone. I had a kid who had a birthday and she wanted to go away. We went away. I'm sorry. Okay. Talk about a the book. Very trying time. I'm so sorry. It was really hard. <laughs> it really was. Okay. So this is about... Isla? Isla. Isla? Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Isla. <laughs> and this is Omegaverse. It's dark. And we're living in domes now. So everybody's in domes. And they are going, Isla and her boyfriend are going to move to a new city. And so they have to leave their dome that they live in and travel on this train to the new dome. But they go through this like country, like this area where it isn't uncommon, but it's not common either for the trains to get stopped and the young um, unmarried women on the train get pulled off and are taken by the savages. <laughs> so what do you know? She's on the train. The train gets stopped and they come through and they take her. Dun, dun, dun. That's and. Good. This is setting up like, oh, my time is up. This is setting up a new world, basically, in a series. And so I think you call it a soft cliffhanger. So I feel like it was a little more of a cliffhanger than a soft cliffhanger. But, I mean, it definitely leaves you needing to continue the series mm -hmm. if you want to know what happens. It's not one of those cliffhangers, though, where you go, oh, my gosh, I got to know. You know, yeah. like, you know more is coming. You're just, it's okay. It's okay. So the next book I read is a reread, but audio came out for it for the first time. So I had to listen to the audio. So it is a first time listen for the audio. So let's talk about that. My hand is in the way. Okay. So that is After the Storms by Liz Hamilton. You guys have seen that I've been doing a re reread or a listen uh, throughout the year this year because she's been putting out the audio. This is the third book. This is the last audio. Again, this one was five stars. It was amazing, but this is about Rowan. And Sam, this is into the world. This is um, the storms have gone through and just kind of ruined everything. That it's it's you know destroyed the world. At this point, we're in the last book, and we see Rowan and her family living underground with the cult that we were teased about and told about throughout the first two books. But now we get to see that and the ramifications of that, and so that is where we're at. So this is just the conclusion to the story. Again, I gave it five stars because the audio was amazing. the The woman who did the audio is awesome and i love these stories okay okay what else okay so my next read is my two books that go together so i okay. read freeing sully and i read for the love of whiskey both of those are by melissa foster and this is the start of the whiskey's dark nights at redemption ranch series okay that's a Ooh. mouthful wow yes okay. All right, so okay, about it. so Freeing Sully is about how Sully escapes from the cult that she has grown up in. It is extremely short, but it gives you a lot of good background understanding of Sully. Because I feel like if you just start with For the Love of Whiskey, Sully's character comes off a little different. So you really kind of need that background to fully understand her. So for the Love of Whiskey is a full length book and it is about Sully going to this redemption ranch where she's gonna basically just get some help, kind of like learn how to be around a normal society, I guess you could say. But they're also going to help keep her protected because she's extremely scared that the cult leader is going to find her and bring her back. And this is where she meets Callahan, who we, we call Cowboy in the book. 
and they start to kind of form a little bit of a relationship. I rated this a four. I loved Freeing Sully. I thought it was really, really good, but at times, um, for the love of whiskey, drug a little bit for me, but it was still good. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so you know how earlier I was talking about Teddy Hamilton narrating things? Yes. And I think if anybody's been on our channel, they know that like, he's my favorite. He's just my favorite. This is so, new information. Shocking, I know. So I was on Instagram and I saw that Devney Perry had a thing about, this is the book that you should read this month. And it was in her Calamity Montana series. I have not read that series yet. But what caught me was, this is like book five in, in there. So it's like right in the middle, but they can be read as standalones. Is it's a single mom situation. And Teddy Hamilton narrates. And the hero's nickname for the heroine is Mama. And I needed to hear Teddy Hamilton say that. So that's why we read this book. So let's talk about the book. <laughs> I know Mandy's getting ready to get me help right away. I, I, I can just hear it. She's, she's making the phone calls. But... So this is The Brawl by Devney Perry or Willa Nash. I think it says Willa Nash on here. That is Devney Perry's other pen name. Um, but this is about Lark. She's a single mom. Her baby, I believe, is 17 months or 16, 16 months old. Um, not quite a year and a half. And uh, she's living in this tiny town that she's grown up in. Her family is a very prominent family in this town. And then you have Ronan. He is a lawyer who has just moved to Montana from California. And there's a lot of prejudice towards him about being a Californian in Montana. And he's having a hard time getting his business up and running. But he sees Lark one day and he just has got to introduce himself. So he kind of runs out of his office and he pretends that she had dropped a $20 bill on the ground. And she's like, I don't carry cash ever. That's not mine. And like she totally shoots him down. He sees her several times. She keeps shooting him down um, before he before she agrees to go out with him. Turns out he ends up to be her new neighbor. So there's that forced proximity where they're together a lot. Um, but it's a single, it's you know, small town, um, an older heroine, she is 35 and she's a single mom. You've got the the young hot lawyer. It was, it was just really cute. It was a solid four stars. I really love Devony Perry's writing and I, I can always get into her books. Her books are always fun. And, and Teddy Hamilton says mama. She's almost as old as you. Still younger, though. As am I. I don't know, but I had my kids younger. 35 chasing around a 17 or 16 month old. That sounds exhausting. I had a, my youngest was five at 35. That was exhausting. My youngest was uh, still a baby when I was 35. Mm-hmm. Was exhausting. I had my youngest I was very baby. close to a geriatric pregnancy. <laughs> my my youngest was That's born. It's just awful that they do that. I know. My youngest was born 10 days before I turned 30. So. All right. It is horrible they do that. What's next on the list? All right. My next book is a book you have read. And you've talked about it more than once on our channel. <gasps> really? Yes. Oh, I hope you liked it. All right. Did what? I tell you? I don't remember. Did you? I don't know, but now I'm all by myself. Oh, well. I thought, I thought oh, we were no, talking. Tell me. Tell me. I thought you were going to talk about it. Did you tell me? I don't remember. Okay. I read No Small Bet by Samantha Christie. Oh, no, you didn't tell me. You, you told me you wanted to read it, but I didn't know you read it. Okay, well, so I did. did. Tell me all about it. it. What? So tell me all about it. You already know. No, I mean, tell me <laughs> how you liked it. Tell them about it. Tell me how you liked it. Okay. Okay. I'll set the timer now. Okay. Okay. So, No Small Bet by Samantha Christie. This is about Addison and Hawk. Hawk is definitely an anti hero. This is not a dark romance, but he is an anti hero. He is a jerk. <laughs> And he finds out that he has a baby and he tries to deny it at first. But then uh, the mom dies during like birth. So the baby is still in the hospital. He is goes reluctantly to get the paternity test, feeling like it's not going to be his kid, but it is his kid. And so he's like, OK, well, I need to figure out how to get this kid up for adoption. Don't want to see, see it. Nothing, nothing. 
And the grandpa gets wind of this. And grandpa's kind of like in everybody's business. He's a businessman, owns lots of stuff. So every, he kind of knows everything that's going on in this town. And so he goes to Hawk and he tells them, this is unacceptable. You will, I'm going to basically take away all your money. But if you take the kid for one year, I will, uh, we'll work my timer went off we'll work out this deal and you'll st you'll get more than what you're supposed to get and so hawks look fine but there's some stipulations of things that he has to do and he goes through a lot of nannies because he's just an awful person <laughs> let's be honest and then one day addison he bumps into addison and basically kind of strong arms her into being his nanny like she doesn't even realize she's supposed to live with him like this is how how he kind of goes about it and Addison has a prosthetic so she has um, a partial leg and then she has her prosthetic and so she has some monetary reasons for agreeing to do this but she is like I mean she's the heroine of the story like if there's a heroine in the story <laughs> it is gonna be Addison from No Small Bet. Yeah. And Hawk goes through a pretty good transformation and it takes him some time, but he does. So I saw somebody complaining about this book, complaining about him. And I'm like, but wait, you have to read the whole book to see how he truly gets his act together and he realizes like yeah. himself. So if you are like, oh, this doesn't sound good because you're like telling me he's an anti-hero and he's a jerk, but it's so good. I rated it five stars. I, I really it enjoyed it. It was a favorite of mine last year. Well, it's so different from the typical nanny trope where yeah. like the guy, you know, oh, woe is me. Something happened and he needs a nanny mm -hmm. because he's all alone. And then like, oh, he falls for the nanny mm -hmm. because this is what's been missing from his life. This is not what happens here. No, at all. he's very, very like he won't. He's reluctant to even name the baby. And that's I remember that. Like, that was a yeah. thing for me where I'd be like, just name her. Give her a name. Yeah. Um, but there is some comedic relief, too, because where, like, our hair when her leg falls off because it's, like, her original prosthetic and she can't, like, it, it would, it, like, she turns the wrong way and it falls off. <laughs> like, there were times I remember laughing about that. So, it was great. I love that book. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So, okay. okay. So, next, I went and read a Kate Rivenhall book. This is one that I think I got off Eden Books. Um, it's very short. It's like 40 pages. Let's talk about it. Because, whew, that was, it was, it was a lot. So this is The Havisham Breeding Curse. Uh, again, by Kate Rivenhall. She's the one that wrote um, Eclipse Ritual that we've talked about quite a bit. So this is like 40 pages of taboo fun is what's in here. So this is about Margaret. It is a historical, it takes place back in Victorian, I, I can't remember, a, a long time ago. Um, Margaret has denied all the suitors that have come to marry her and her parents have like had it with her. And so they're like, go stay with your brother. Okay, you're gonna go stay at his house. Now, John is older than her by like at least 10 years. Um, There's a big age gap there. And when she gets there, John has discovered that there's a curse on the family and something's supposed to happen around midnight, the night that she's there, which is just before Halloween or before All Hallows Eve. And um, they don't know exactly what's gonna happen when the curse hits, but the curse hits and things get wild. And that's all I can say because it's really, it's only 40 pages. It is like an excuse to have a smutty good time is what it is. Um, I gave it three stars, not because it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it because it's just a 40 page book it's like there's there is a plot somewhere in there <laughs> it's pretty small but i did enjoy it it's just that it, it's a 40 page book there's not a lot of depth in that so um three stars three stars doesn't mean that i don't enjoy it it just especially with a novella you know it's kind of hard to give that five stars but katie kate's writing is still great and it was still a crazy crazy time so what else? Well, I don't really like the nanny trope. It's just not, I don't know, because I think it's because it's usually too cutesy. Yeah. And I get tired of that. And this is probably what led to my funk. 
Probably. But I ended up reading another nanny book. I really enjoyed it though. But I think that I was just reading, you know, you know what I mean. Does that yeah. make sense? Okay. Yeah. okay. So I read Forbidden Hearts by Corinne Michaels. And this is book number one in the Whitlock family. I really wanted to go back and read this because Asher's daughter, Olivia, is um, deaf and she uses ASL and she loves to give her uncle, who I read about in the other book, a bad time. So I'm like, I have to go read the story that is about her in, you know, a roundabout way. So we have Asher who has Olivia for the summer. Her mom is going on an assignment and so he needs to hire a nanny. Uh, they are not together, by the way. So he needs a nanny. The nanny, the lady who is supposed to come is not able to, or there's just some reasons. And so he's kind of in a bind because he's a cop and he's uh, in charge of a lot of stuff um, at the, in his jurisdiction or whatever you want to call it. And so he desperately like needs a nanny. He cannot take time off, but he will not just allow his daughter be with somebody that cannot sign because this is like a very important time. And so we have Phoebe, who is the chief's daughter, but her and Asher don't really get along very well. So there's some reasons Phoebe and him don't really get along. Phoebe's a little flighty and he is like, no, I need somebody extremely reliable, like for my daughter. But she's like, no, I can do this. And she's back in town for her own reasons. And, you know, this is the nanny trope. So this semi enemies to lovers nanny trope is going to change but I really really enjoyed this one a lot so even though it is a little more on the sweeter cuter side it was a solid four stars really enjoyed it I'm pretty sure that's what I gave it to when I read it, it was a solid four I like so that. yeah what I'm saying about my funk is I think I just read way too many like sweet cute books back to back and then I got restless in my reading after that so I needed something to break that up. So that's where, where I was going with that. And I'll talk about the book that broke everything up for me and broke me in our next One Minute Book Rex, which will be out on Monday. But I still have a couple more books and so do you. So oh, I do. Yep. what's next on your oh, list? The next one is, it's an alien book. Um, it's interesting. Shocker, I know. Yeah. Um, and he's blue, but he's not Ice Planet Barbarian blue. I think that's just a coincidence. I don't know. Let's talk about this because it's it's interesting. So this is The Aliens Ransom by Ella Maven. This is about Frankie who, like all of these books, is abducted in her pajamas in the middle of the night by bad aliens. And um, she ends up, like, they, they take her to this planet. Uh, the bad aliens hand her over to these warrior type aliens who ride hover motorcycles. What else? Anyhow, so that is where she meets Daz. Daz realizes at, very early on that she's his fated mate. Um, the bad aliens were giving the girls over to these guys because they were like the middlemen um, to transfer them to some other aliens that bought them for breeding purposes. But once he once he meets Frankie, he realizes, which he can't even call her Frankie, he calls her Frankie the, Frankie here the whole time. But anyhow, once he meets her, he realizes that he can't just hand these women over. But they do have his brother, and they're holding him uh, hostage, and so he's got to figure out how to save his brother. Okay. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. I enjoyed it. It was a fun little time. There were just some parts where I was like, Really? Like the hovercraft? That's just weird. That was weird. I, I wanted Barbarian, obviously. Um, some of the dialogue was a little, I don't know, it felt a little campy in certain spots. I, I did enjoy it. It is the first book in a series. I might continue. I don't know. But I, I did enjoy it. It just, you know, it was no Ice Planet Barbarian. Okay, so my next book is called Maybe This Time by Cara Bastone, and this is an audible only listen. So I, um, this is about June, and June is played by Zoe Chow, Chao, and then we have Mikey, who's done by Noah Reed. So I, this has like the, the full animation. So we have June who accidentally time travels 85 years into the future and she does not know how she's gotten there. 
and she has her cell phone with her and one day it is working and she is able to make a call but she's only able to call one number and it turns out that is Mikey who is a teacher where um, before she time traveled she was an English teacher at a high school and he is the gym teacher at that high school. The problem being is that her and Mikey didn't really get along. They didn't talk much. June was very, very quiet and a little socially awkward. So she didn't really have friends and things like that. And she kind of kept to herself and tended to taking care of her mom. And she is able to call him four weeks prior to, that was my timer, to her time traveling. And so she has to get him on board with stopping past day June from accidentally time traveling and they have four weeks to do this. So it was a super fun listen. I rated it four stars. I really enjoyed it. Okay, good. So this is my last one and we're going to end on a interesting note. Thank goodness this week is over because I found other things after this, but let's, let's talk about this one. Okay. I've seen this one around quite a bit. I can't remember if it was on TikTok or if it's on um, Instagram, but I've seen this one around. So this is The Sinful Delights. It's by Elizabeth Bardo. So this is a mafia romance and it's supposed to be reverse harem, which, which it is reverse harem. Um, okay. So this is about Elsie. Elsie, her divorce is finalized. She's a little bit older. Divorce is finalized. She decides she's going to live it up. She's going to go get laid in a nightclub. Like, she's going to go to a nightclub. She's going to have herself a one-night stand. She does that in the back room at this club. The guy that she has a one-night stand with is our first hero at this point. He is, like, the leader of the mafia. It's, it's an Irish mafia. She walks out. She's, like, the only woman to have ever walked away from him, which I was, like, seriously, but okay. So she walks away from him. Then the next day, she sees her husband, her ex-husband, at like her favorite place that she likes to eat or, or whatever. And he's already there with another girl. So she gets very upset. She goes back to the bar, to the, the nightclub, which is now a bar. And she gets drunk and the mafia guy finds her and it's like instant, you're mine. And then on top of that, all of his like dudes that work with him are like, she's mine too. And it's not a big deal. And I just, I gave it, two stars. I know it's got higher ratings. I think I marked a one star in here. This is a two star book. I have three on here. I got to go double check and make sure I didn't get, actually give it three. Doesn't deserve it. I do not understand the connection. You have to build a connection. Why was he attracted to her? Why? Just because she wore a red dress and she walked out on him after the, the one night stand. I, I don't understand. What's so different about her? Why? Why do all of these guys want her when they've never even talked to her? I don't get it. This is a series. And I've seen people, like, it has higher ratings. People are like, oh, I don't get it. Sorry. I also think that I'm a lot more critical on mafia romances because I read so many mafia romances. Like, that's one of my favorite tropes. So, okay. What's your, this is your last one, right? Because that was my last mm -hmm. one. Okay, what's your last book? Okay, my last book is Stealing Home by Kimberly Carrillo. Okay. Ready? Oh, damn it. Wow. I'm obsessed. You, you know what? You're really it's obsessed because... with yourself today. You know Oh, yeah. Um, you know what it is? It's because we're recording so late at night, we get a little woo at night. Okay, sorry. Your turn. There you go. Are you having like an afternoon drink or something or oh, early maybe, evening? Maybe, maybe I should. I don't know. I don't drink. Late evening cocktail. I don't even know what time it is anymore. It's evening. Okay. So I read Stealing Home by Kimberly Carrillo. So we have Scott, who is a college baseball player. And his coach's wife, Harlow, is going to be his love interest. So they end up meeting because the coach and his wife do like lots of different things. Like events and stuff that they're at. And so he knows who she is. And he happens to notice that she has some bruises and he becomes very concerned. And it's very kind of insta-lovey how the two of them end up connecting. And they end up working on an outreach program together, which is where they spend the majority of their time where they kind of get to know each other. And let's just say the coach is like a real jerk to Harlow. And so she needs to be leaving him. 
And that's kind of where we go with this story. So Scott is definitely a cinnamon roll hero. And I think I might have just needed a break from like the cinnamon roll heroes. Uh, because I just, I was struggling a little bit with why he was so into Harlow. And uh, so I rated it three and a half stars. I just, I liked it. But there were a few times where I was just kind of questioning what Scott saw in Harlow because there, I just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And it could have just been me. It could have been, been it. Yeah. Yeah. It was still good. I still liked it. I just, sometimes the Insta love stuff is just not always my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I can go with it and sometimes I question it. And I, I think I was just kind of in a mood. So and I you want to read some baseball? This is a good book to read this spring for some baseball. Mm -hmm. I've also found that, too, like, mood-wise, like, sometimes if I start a book and I'm like, this is horrible, but then I try and reread it several months later when I'm in a different mood, it works for me. So maybe that was the case, too. So. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. So that is our week for you. That's all the books that we read. So. Yeah, there you have it. Okay. So comment below, how was your reading week? What are you reading now? What are you liking? What have you not liked? Tell us all the bookish things in the comments and make sure to check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video.